Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Josh Strife Hayes, and in this cosplay video, we're going to be building a Bandos God Sword from old school RuneScape. Now, as with all the cosplay videos, we're going to be using easy to find and cheap materials because I believe cosplay should be available and affordable to everyone. So if you would like to follow along with this video, and I encourage you to do that, I'll leave in the description of the YouTube video all the materials that I've used. For now, let's talk about the Bandos God Sword. Let's see what I'm going to be building. Let's see what problems we're going to come up against and what we might need. So. I have a picture of the Bandos Godsword on my phone. I'll superimpose the same picture onto the video. Let's just have a look. So the Bandos Godsword is a really heavy two-handed weapon from old school RuneScape. You can see by the picture, really thick blade. You've got these really intricate bits coming out the side of it. You've got the really intricate pommel at the bottom of it. That's the symbol of Bandos. The hilt, we've got spikes, we've got curves. We've got a lot of stuff going on with this sword. So. It's going to be relatively difficult to make. Saying that, it's actually going to be really easy. If you're sat there thinking, oh no, this is going to be complicated, don't worry, I'm going to talk you through every single thing we need to do to make this awesome. So first things first, the Bandos God Sword is a two-handed sword. It is huge. It is a really, really long blade. Now cardboard, which is the main medium we're going to be working with, Cardboard has great strength over very short distances, but over long distances it tends to fall down, it tends to bend really easily. So what we need is a core. A core is simply something that you put in the middle of something to make it stronger. LARP swords have cores, cosplay swords, most of them have cores. What we will be using as a core are these things. Now this is a garden stake. I bought this from Wilco's. I bought, they come in a pack of two. I bought this from Wilco's for about five pounds. A, a good gardener would be able to stick this in the ground and have stuff grow around it. Now my farming level is terrible, which is why I'm going to be using it to make a sword. So we have our core. Those garden stakes will form the core of our sword. We have lots of duct tape, one of the most important things that I build with. And then we have the most important medium that I work with, which is Cardboard. Cardboard is an excellent medium. If you've not seen these videos before, go to any shop near you, any major supermarket, any small shop, and ask nicely if you can have their recycling cardboard. They will normally say yes, and you'll be able to get a huge supply of this really, really good material. Now, I'm lucky enough to have a massive cardboard box, which is pretty much the exact length of the blade we're going to need. If you don't have a piece of cardboard this big, that's fine. Just get a load of smaller pieces of cardboard, duct tape them together till you have one long strip of cardboard. The first thing we need to do is cut this cardboard into roughly the shape of the sword. Now you'll notice that the cardboard isn't very wide, so all those nice curved and sliced bits on the side of the blade, we're not going to be able to get that on this. That's fine. All I want to do with this is cut out the actual width of the main blade and then all the extra bits, all the spikes and all the curvy bits, we will add those on afterwards. So the first thing I need to do right now is cut this to the length and to the thickness of the main blade. Let's do that now. Now, if you're wondering what measurement am I going to use for the thickness of the middle bit of the blade, I'm just guessing, to be honest. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm looking at the blade and thinking, it looks about this thick. I'll just go with that. So if you're there thinking, oh my God, I need to be centimeter or millimeter perfect, you don't. You honestly don't. Just look, just kind of eyeball, and then just hope for the best. So I have estimated the, the core thickness, the main, the majority thickness of the blade to be about that thick. If I get a pair of scissors and cut this cardboard strip, this spare strip, I reckon about that thick, just there, that's probably about four inches. So if I'm holding the handle here, this will be the thickness of the blade as it goes all the way up. So what I'm now going to do is take this strip, this four inch strip, 
go along the cardboard and just mark off on the top where this is, all the way down. And then I'll draw a long line along the dotted line that I'm drawing now. And this will give me a nice uniform blade shape. A real super simple, super easy way to measure things. You don't need complicated, expensive tools. You just need a pen, a pair of scissors, a bit of cardboard, and lots of patience. Give it a go. Okay, we have the first side of the blade. This is how tall this sword is going to be. This sword is going to be taller than me. This is going to be massive, which makes sense. It is a god sword. We've got one side. This is going to be one edge of the blade. But if we have a single edge blade and we don't put a core in, this is what's going to happen. It's just going to flop down, which is exactly why we've got those cores. You could use anything for the core. You could use a broom handle. You could use a long piece of fiberglass. You could use any of the garden stakes that I'm using, whatever's long and thin and you can afford. The plan is, we're going to take this edge of the blade, we're going to put it on one side of the core, then we're going to take another exact copy of this, put it underneath the core, then we're going to bend the edges together and duct tape the whole thing all the way down. So the first thing we need is another one of these. So just go along, draw the measurement, and cut out a second version of this. I'll do that now. Using scissors on cardboard for a long time will hurt your hands. You can use a knife if you've got one. I've got a pocket knife but it's not really that sharp and it wouldn't cut a nice straight line. So just, just deal with it. We now have the two sides of the blade cut out and our core. However, if we go back to that picture of the Bandos Godsword, you will note that the, the tip of the sword, the very end of the sword, isn't square. It's not flat. It's, it's a point. It goes to a point, so it could be used as a, as a stabbing weapon in real life as well. It goes to a point. We need to get that point. So let's just roughly eyeball what that point would be and cut it in. So I'll take one of the sides, eyeball that the point would be roughly, roughly about there, and then I'll cut to what looks accurate. A quick tip whenever you've cut a point off something, take the bit of cardboard that you just cut off, put it on the other side, line it up with the middle bit, Line it up to be straight, and you'll have a perfect template to cut out a perfect mirror image of that cut. Once I've got the cut started, I can just carry on with the same direction. And then we go to there. That looks about right. That looks like the tip of a god sword. To make sure this tip is exactly the same on the other one, I'm going to layer the two on top of each other. I'm going to trace round it and then cut that out as well. Where's my pen? Another important note whenever you're making anything or being creative in any way is tidy up as you go. Because I've only been cutting for a few minutes and I've already got bits of cardboard all over the place. If you don't keep on top of that, it will get on top of you. So. Make sure you're keeping the cardboard all kind of out the way and neat. Brilliant. We have the two edges of our blades. Now we need to connect them to the core. I could open this pack up because it is two of these, but I quite like the idea of using it as just a double pack. I quite like the idea. You've got a bit of bend. You've got a bit of give with it, but if you try and bend it against both of them at the same time, 
Nah, that ain't bending at all. So I like this as a strong core. Let's definitely use this. If I lay it on top of one of them and give the tip a little bit of room, because I need to make sure the tip is pinched together, so the tip is not, not right to the end of the core. This allows the core to push off the end over here, and we can, we cut, this, we can cut the blade down slightly to make sure we get the handle, because you'll notice right now that it's pretty darn long. It is pretty, pretty darn long as a blade. Now note about cores. If I, if I simply put this bit of cardboard on top and then wrap a load of duct tape around all of it, then yeah, it'd look nice, but you'd have a problem. There would be no actual duct tape sticking to the core itself. So you can't sandwich both bits of cardboard and then duct tape it all up in one go. You've got to connect one edge of the blade to the core first and then add the second one on. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to take a roll of duct tape. doesn't matter whether I use silver or black, they're exactly the same. And then I'm just going to go all the way down. Now I've got more black duct tape than silver, so I'm going to use a nice big strong roll of black duct tape and I'm going to put strips all along this to connect it to the core. Now I've got three bits of duct tape holding the core onto the blade. This is not the majority of the strength. This is just to allow me to show you something. I'm now going to hold where the handle's going to be and work out. This saw is massive. This is so huge. I think it should go to about there for a double handle grip and then I can add on a hilt at the bottom. So I'm actually going to trim the blade down very slightly. Take my pair of scissors. I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut maybe five inches off the edge of the blade just down here. After cutting it off down there, I'll cut it off on the other one as well to make sure it's fair and even and equal. This will take it. It's feeling very much like a Final Fantasy weapon at the moment, which I suppose would be appropriate. It's feeling very much like Cloud Strife's Buster Sword, which I suppose is very appropriate considering my name. So I've cut about that much off the end of one of the blades. I'm going to go along and do the same to this one before I continue and do any more. Like I said at the start, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. There's no real, there's no plan in my mind. I'm just doing what I think is right, as I think it's right to do. Okay, so the blades are trimmed down. Now I need to get back to completely connecting this piece of cardboard to the inside core. And I'm going to do that by wrapping, instead of just sticking, actually wrapping duct tape around it now. Let's do this. Okay, what we've got now is one side of this blade duct taped onto the core. I now need to take the other side of the blade, this bit, and connect it to this side. Now here's an important but small note. This side of the blade, the one that's touching the table right now, it's flat. If I put the other side on top and I push it down to meet the edge, it's going to bend. Now that's fine, but if I only bend the top one like this, then my final sword will look weird because one blade will be completely flat and the other blade will be like a triangle shape where it bends down to meet the corners. So I need to make sure that I'm also bending this blade that's touching the table up. I'm peeling it up slightly so it meets it. That way you get a nice diamond shape of the blade going all the way down instead of simply having a flat side and then a triangular side bent to meet it. 
you have two sides that are equally bent to meet each other, like an actual a cutting edge of a knife. So I'm going to go down now, I'm going to bend this edge up slightly, bend the other edge up, put this blade on top, and when I am happy that they are both equally bending in the middle and the blade edges are meeting, I'm going to wrap the entire thing in duct tape all the way down, make it really strong. Let's do that now. I'm going to start duct taping the two sides of the blade together from the tip, from the point down, because although it would be possible to fix the point if I messed it up, it's going to be easiest to make sure that the actual point of the blade is together, it makes it look real sharp. So I'm going to line these two bits up, take these together, and then carry on down the whole rest of the blade. Some of you are probably thinking, why don't I just get one long bit of duct tape and go all the way down the edge and then fold it over? I could do that. But if I do that, I'm trusting the strength to hold the edges together to one bit of duct tape. What I would rather do is wrap every single ring of duct tape individually around this whole blade. Yes, it'll take a lot longer and it will probably use more duct tape, but I will have the peace of mind knowing the blade is definitely held together and is really secure. So I'm going to do that. If you want to do one long strip down either side, you go for it. But I'm going to go around and do the whole blade. Once you've got the blade completely covered, you might notice, if you've been doing what I'm doing, that one side where you've been putting the duct tape looks lovely, and the other side has all these bumps and imperfections and small gaps you've missed. That's not a problem. Just take one long strip of duct tape and go all the way down the middle. This thing is huge. I did not realize when I started this project it would be this tall. So I don't even know if I can fit it. I can just about fit this on the width of the camera. This is a this is a 1080 webcam and it just about fits the entire length of this blade. This is ridiculous. If I hold the blade, I have to be all the way at the edge. This is like a this is a Final Fantasy weapon now. This is truly a god sword. If I was fighting a god and I had this, I'd feel pretty safe. I'd be okay with this. You'd be able to... I, I can't even swing it. This thing is massive. What do we need to add now? Let's go back to that original picture of the Bandos god sword. Let's see what else we need to add. Now, whenever I'm adding things to cosplayers, I like to start with the most obvious part of the cosplay, the biggest thing, the thing that people will notice first, and then move down from there. Now, I think the thing that people will notice first is the giant handguard, which looks almost like 
like two snakes kind of facing inwards to each other that way. Then you've got the spikes down the bottom just there. So let's build that. We need a, a curved kind of hand guard going around and then spikes coming off the bottom of it as well. And the width of that hand guard is going to be about equal to the width of those downward facing hooks at the top of the blade. So we'll deal with the, we'll do the hand guard first. We're going to need a big, thick, thankfully it's a pretty much exactly the, the width of the desk that I'm working on. So we'll get a piece of cardboard and we'll do these big curved hand guards first. Now I don't know how I'm going to do this. Like I said, whenever I make something I, I don't really have a plan, I just kind of go for it. So let's go back to the, the cardboard we had at the start and let's cut it to about here. That seems about right. That's, yeah, that'll do. Eyeballing all of these measurements, guys. I'm just going for it. Have you ever heard someone say, oh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm such a perfectionist. I'm too much of a perfectionist. Don't be. Just get quite close to where you need to be and then refine and refine and refine. You don't need to get it right first time. In fact, attempting to get it right first time is normally the reason most people don't attempt anything. So if you're there thinking, oh, I can't do this, just, just do it. Just go for it. If it goes wrong, we can fix it. It's not a problem. I now have this big square of cardboard. I'm going to place the square on the desk. I'm going to place the blade on the square. I'm going to try and get the blade roughly halfway. And then I'm going to draw what I think would work for this guard. And I'm going to have the picture next to me. If I had more time, I'd have printed this off and I'd focus on the, the tiny bits, but I don't want to do that. So it actually drops down slightly below the handguard. You can see the spiky bits on that picture actually curve slightly down. They go to where the handle is. So I'm going to move this blade slightly forward a bit so I can get that downward curve. And then how high does this need to come up to? If I was holding the handle here, it looks like the handguard is going to roughly come up to... I'm going to use an old bit of cardboard as a ruler. I'm just going to rip this here and use this bit that I cut earlier as a ruler. It's going to come up to roughly... It's actually quite high to be fair. It's probably around there. So I'll cut it to there. This is like a sculptor making anything out of stone or, or marble or wood. You don't get the final shape instantly. You cut bits away and then cut more away and then cut more away and you end up with the final shape. That's the, the big important thing. You cut away more and more and more until you end up with the final shape. Now the bits that are there, I'm looking at... I'm looking at a curve to roughly there. I'm going to get one side of this done perfectly and then I'm going to trace it onto the other side so they're exactly the same. This needs to curve around. So the final spikes will end there, but the final curvy bit will end just there. So we're looking at... We're looking at a curve to there. That seems about right. And then this curve goes across. Again, I'm just eyeballing it and I'm just guessing where it could go to. I'm going to draw this bit to about there. And then the whole thing is pretty thick. So the whole thing, the really thick thing. Ah, we can actually make this even thicker. This is good. Make this even thicker. Curl it to there. Yeah, that looks decent. Actually, no, I want that even further out. God, I'm such a... Here we go. We're going to get this. We're going to get this right. I'm going to make this look real good. That's the plan. That is the plan. Maybe it needs to be longer. Possibly. 
thought of a simpler way to do this. I don't need to make this in one big piece, do I? I can make this in multiple pieces put together. Let's use the duct tape as a as a stencil to draw around to get the circle bit correct. I'll draw draw roughly to there with the spike coming inwards. Let's cut away as I go so I know that I'm getting close. I'm going to cut as I go. So then any any shapes that I commit to will be there. I often think if you spend way too long thinking about something, you don't end up making any progress on it. So we need to, every now and again, say, right, screw it, let's make some progress. Let's actually progress, see where we get to with this. I'm going to trace down the blade in the center so I know the kind of edgings that I'm working with. And that bit should come to... Oh no, my phone's gone off. That bit should come to about there. So close to the blade, but not on the blade. And then all the way around to there. It's quite a, quite a tight turn, isn't it? It's quite a tight turn for it. Now, no matter what happens, we need to cut off the edge just here. That definitely needs to be cut off. So what I've done now is I've cut off the, the I've rounded the corner. Now you can't see too well, but I've rounded the corner off that bit there if the camera focuses in. And as I round the corner, I can continue going down with it till I get to roughly around here. I think that seems about right. That's good. Okay, so I've gone down to about there with it now. Uh, the hook comes in. It doesn't actually touch the blade, but it does get close. So it gets real close, but doesn't touch it. Let's cut down the line where the blade is. So we've cut down where the blade actually is. And that's cut out of it. Now the curve continues. If any of you have got a God Sword in game, you can probably just take a really cool screenshot of your character using one, and then you'd be able to follow it around perfectly. I, however, do not have a God Sword in game, so do not have the luxury of being able to do that. That seems about right. In fact, even smaller than that, it's actually quite a spiky, quite a spiky bit, isn't it? This thing. And because RuneScape doesn't have that much, that many polygons and all of its items, it's quite jaggedy. Cut this to here. If you're following along at home, sorry that I'm not giving you the exact measurements, but part of learning is to not have the exact measurements. Just go and do what you think is right. Commit to an idea and find a way to make it work. Commit to something and then find a way to make that idea work. It might be perfect, it might not be, but it will be yours, no matter what. If I ever go to a uh, rune fest again, I will take this with me, and you'll all be able to see how it actually turned out. Tidy up. Now, as usual, I think I've got the first curve cut. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the first curve. That's good. Very happy with that. But now we need the spiky bit that's underneath it. Right, so that's going to be the first curved guard part that will go on the blade just... Oh, this thing is so heavy. That will go on the blade just there. This thing is so heavy to hold with one hand. I'm not left-handed, so I'm not strong in that arm. But now we also need the spiky bits. And the spiky bits are going to come down to roughly about there. And they actually curve up at the end, don't they? They curve up into quite a quite a dominant, powerful spike. 
let's cut let's cut this bit to there cut along the edge if you've made cosplay before especially cardboard stuff and you've got any suggestions or things you think I could be doing better please let me know I'm always interested to see what other people have created the way other people make things I think it's a fascinating world to see how we all make our own cosplay and stuff awesome that's cut I think that's good now the problem with the actual runescape model of this sword is the polygons don't actually have anything physically connecting them so it's going to be really hard to replicate like nothing so I'm doing the best I can to replicate the spikes that you're going to see on this I'm going to cut this to here this is going to take a lot of duct tape to make decent but I'm going to try as hard as I can to replicate the spikes there isn't an exact number of spikes that we need to be going for just multiple spikes again eyeball the measurements and see what we can do I'm happy with it so far actually it's looking pretty good it's a very strange real-life sword design it would never ever ever work you would end up cutting your own arm off before you manage to hurt anyone with this blade but you'd feel cool doing it right I think I'm happy with that that seems to be the edging of the god sword maybe even slightly thinner to be honest because the thickness needs to come at the top maybe slightly thinner slightly spikier with this thing there needs to be a downward spike with the curve because the curve at the minute is spiking in toward the sword but it needs to spike down toward the blade if we do this cut it in a different way I can have it spiking down yeah that'll work change it to change it to that all right cool it's now spiking toward it but I need to make it sharper so I'm going to cut some more just like a sculptor sculptor finalizing their statue I'm going to cut some more bits off this so it's real jaggedy get that real old school runescape aesthetic going on they were never never nice clean lines or nice clean curves it was always sharp jaggedy lines and that's what we loved that is the aesthetic that we enjoyed as gamers and that's why old school runescape is still so popular so popular nowadays yeah that's what we want that's looking nicer get rid of those stupid curves make it look like an actual spike yeah look at that that's better see that's looking sharper and spikier much better I'm happier with that as a as the god sword curve that's cool that is very cool now I need to copy this this side onto this side and the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to fold it in half and trace it when you are working with corrugated cardboard like I am you'll notice that corrugated cardboard has these thin I'll get closer to the camera so you can see it has these real thin corrugations down the middle corrugations are just the wavy bits of cardboard in the center it makes it super easy to fold cardboard with the corrugations super easy to fold it with the corrugations it's super hard to fold it against the corrugations and when I've been cutting this out I've been cutting it with the corrugations along that way so when I fold it it's super easy just to put some pressure on it and the whole thing folds over if you find that you've been cutting in the wrong way and the corrugations are going the other way in the cardboard and you can't fold it just get a piece of paper or another big bit of cardboard trace it flip it over cut that out put it on the other side problem solved we can uh, we can do that but me I'm in the lucky position of being able to fold over stick it on the other side and then just trace around it nice and simple that's exactly what I need to be doing now tracing nice and simply so let's do this now
Once I've got the image traced onto the other side of the cardboard, I just need to cut that side out as well. And what we have here is a hilt. Exactly the same as the blade, we will need two of these. Because we'll be putting one hilt on one side and wrapping it round, and one hilt on the other, and we'll then be duct taping them together. Now it's super important to cover this whole thing in duct tape. The reason I'm doing that, let me show you. You'll notice we've got these bits here. These are without a doubt the weakest parts of the blade. They are the thinnest bits of cardboard. You could rip that easily with your hand, but it's quite difficult to rip duct tape. Once you get it going, it's really easy, but if a duct tape is solid, if a, just a three or four layers of duct tape is there, it's really hard to rip it with your hands. You can cut it with a blade, no problem, but it's really hard to rip it with your hands. So if we cover by wrapping around and then cutting to the right shape, this whole thing in duct tape, it's gonna make it super, super strong. And because we're putting so much effort into making this sword, and because we are only using cardboard, one of the weaker materials, we want to make it super strong. So the first thing we need to do now is cut another one of these out. Thankfully, we can just trace it onto another big bit of cardboard. And when we've got another one of these cut out, we need to duct tape both of them completely individually. So let's cut another one of these out by tracing it onto cardboard now. Right, we now have two of them. So these will be sandwiched either side of the blade, and taped together and then secured together. I'm checking the, I'm checking the difference and it's looking pretty sweet. That is two on top of each other and they are looking really good. I'm really happy with how those have turned out. Again, just eyeballing all the differences, all the, the distances and the measurements, and it's looking decent. So what we're going to get now, and this is getting so hard to manipulate this blade around, it's so heavy. We're going to have one underneath, and then one sandwiched on top. And then of course they will be bent down and duct taped together to give that lovely 3D effect. The reason we're going for two of them, and then what we'll have is something that looks like ah, that will be the hilt of the god sword. God, it's looking massive, isn't it? I did not realise when I started this project this sword would be this long. I, I feel like I've underestimated how long this was going to be. But we can do this. We can do this. The first thing is if I were to just duct tape these bits onto the blade right now, there would be bits of cardboard that I'm going to find it remarkably hard to duct tape later. And I want to make sure everything is covered in duct tape to keep it as strong, as waterproof, and as rip resistant as possible. So before we tape it to the blade, and I'm not going to cover everything in tape, I'm going to reinforce all these little spiky bits down here, and then maybe I'm going to put some tape wherever there's a join or a rip or a corner, anywhere that would be easily damaged. So I'll do that now. This is what I mean when I say reinforcing the bits that can rip easily. See that bit in there, that little V-shape there? I could grab it with my hands and rip it, not a problem. So I've put 
duct tape on the other side. So now if I were to try and rip it in, I'm ripping against duct tape. It's, it's still not as strong as, you know, metal could ever be, but it's going to give me peace of mind if I'm swinging this sword round and I accidentally catch something. I'm not going to think, oh god, I've just ripped the hilt off. I'm going to think, eh, I might need to re-duct tape that. But it's definitely not going to break in one swing. Right, I've reinforced what I think are going to be the weakest parts of this handguard while I am building it. If you're ever in doubt, remember that adding another layer of duct tape, it's never going to make anything weaker. So, you may as well do it. Now let's do the same thing to the other one. Okay, I have finished reinforcing both of these uh, hand guards, and just like when we attached one side of the blade to the core, if I were to just clamp both these over and duct tape them to each other, there'd be nothing holding them to the actual blade. So I'm going to attach one of these to the blade real strongly first, then put the other one on the other side, squish them together, and tape them both together. Let's see if I can make that look easy. So I have my blade, the plan is to attach this to the blade via a lot of duct tape going along the blade and then wrapping around repeatedly. And I've left a little, little jutty out bit just there that I can wrap around as well. So let's see if it works. So several layers of duct tape now confirm that this, this hand guard is definitely connected and it is, it is so much bigger than I thought it would be. I have to stand all the way back here, speak a bit louder. I'm using, holding this with one hand straight is, uh, it's possible, but it's really heavy. <laughs> cool. I've got one guard on. I've taped it around several layers of duct tape, taped it around the handle as well to make it real strong, taped it around the blade. We can now flip this over and we can tape the other hand guard on this side. Now, whenever you trace anything, especially if you're doing what I'm doing and just eyeballing all the measurements, you'll find it's never perfectly symmetrical. So it, this way will be different to this way. And I'm going to just try and line it up and see which side is perfect. That's, that's pretty close. And this side... That's actually also pretty close. Okay, I, I thought there'd be a bigger variation in both sides. Ah, there we go. This side is definitely the right one. This is definitely the correct side. There are a small... Very, very, very small number of imperfections, but nothing, nothing that we can't handle. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this to this side, and then 
once this hand guard is taped to this side, I can go and add all the duct tape connecting all the curved bits to each other and all the spiky bits on the bottom to each other as well. So, more duct tape time. Okay, we've got both guards attached to either side of the blade. All we have left to do, with the guards anyway, is go around and wrap tape around both of them so it joins it together. If you were to do this on just one side, if we didn't do this whole 3D thing, then you'd look at the sword and it would look a little bit crap. By doing it this way, we get this lovely, chunky 3D effect. It's much, much nicer. So let's go and add duct tape. When you're duct taping these spiky bits at the base, you will have to cut the tape into quite thin bits and it'll be quite fiddly to do, but you will be able to do it. Stick with it, wrap it round and it will work. Just cut it into thinner strips, really get it in there and wrap it round, stick it down and then add some strips on top as well. So let's cover this whole thing now in duct tape. I am making much faster progress on this than I thought I would be. To be honest, we've got one side pretty much all done, covered in duct tape, nice and solid on that side. And the other side, we are finishing off. Now, whenever you're duct taping a curve, you will need to cut thinner bits of tape out. If you have a really thick bit, you'll end up getting this kind of, it'll fold over on itself and it'll stick to itself, it won't be very good. But if you cut really thin strips, you can go around in a curve. If you are or have any experience in video game design, by cutting thinner strips, you're effectively reducing the size of the polygons you're trying to use, and therefore you can make a smoother curve. But what we've got right now, I'm happy with that. Look at that. That is looking, it's not fully finished yet, but it's looking more like a god sword every minute, more like an actual proper usable, and we can swing it, the, the core that we used, remember those garden poles, that's really solid. It's looking, yeah, it's, it's a solid, solid core, that ain't gonna go anywhere. I've also realized that I've got so caught up in duct taping this whole thing, I completely forgot to go and get any lunch. So I'm gonna go and get some lunch. While I'm out there, I also realized I'm gonna need some paint. I need to paint this. If you're using silver duct tape, great, you don't need to paint it. If you're using black duct tape, like I am, we will need to paint it silver. We will be dry brushing and speckling this whole thing in metallic silver paint. I'll show you exactly how to do that when we get to that step. Metallic paint's not expensive. Again, Wilco's, The Works, Amazon, somewhere cheap. You're not gonna need a lot, but I'm really happy. I'm really happy. Oh, also while I'm out, I'm gonna get some shoelaces because I'm going to use shoelaces to bind the handle. I'll show you exactly how we're doing it later, but for now, lunch. Lunch over, not hungry anymore, bit more duct taping to do, and then I bought some shoelaces in order to bind the handle up. I'll show you how to do that in a second. For now, let's just finish off the duct taping we didn't finish off before.
that is the majority of the handguard duct taped. So we've got the handguard completely covered and solid. Because it's only cardboard, there's obviously a lot of movement in it and it's not ultra strong. It can move around, but that is definitely not going to rip anymore. You've got a real bit of power, a real bit of, of reinforcing behind it. And these spikes are actually, even though it's just cardboard, these spikes are pretty substantial. You caught yourself in one of those fast, that would hurt. In fact, if you hold it in the wrong way and the spike stabs you in the arm, you can you can definitely tell. If I hold it that way, the spike gets me in the forearm just there. The next thing we need to do is, looking back at the picture of the blade, we have these two massive spikes either side. They actually point they actually point slightly up, don't they? They're not pointing down as much, but I'm gonna play it by just them being regular spikes coming out to the side, and then we have the big hook over the top. We'll do these spikes first. That should be that should be pretty simple. That should just be some yeah, some triangles either side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sandwich them together either side. So let's let's cut some triangles out. To save cardboard, I'm going to use some of the offcuts from the bits I was making earlier and just trace as many triangles onto these as I can. If you tessellate the triangles, which means one forward, one backward, I should be able to get all of them onto this one piece. Right, once we have eight triangles, you'll want to match up them into pairs of two. Because we've been eyeballing all of these measurements, they may not be exactly the same every orientation. So just try and find the ones that fit best together in the right combinations. That one's perfect, but that one needs to be trimmed a bit. And that's good. Once we've got that, we'll be doing exactly the same thing. Remember that just like at the start when we had to secure the core to the first blade, you've got to make sure you're securing the first triangle really well and then the second triangle adds on to it. Now if we look at the picture, you'll notice the spikes stick out pretty far. So we can, we've got quite a bit of lebo this, we can make the spikes stick out quite far. Let's get them attached now. What I'm going to do, and a few of you have probably been wanting this already, I'm going to tilt the camera down slightly more so you can actually see what I'm doing on this desk. Maybe that's easier for a few of you to see what I'm actually doing. You can now get a better view of the desk. Okay, I've got the four on one side connected. Now I need to connect the four to the other side and then pinch and tape them together.
Done. Spikes are added. Cut those. They're pretty... Yeah, they're pretty substantial. If I, if I hold this and I actually hit it pretty hard... Yeah. They can, I mean, they can bend. They're cardboard, so they can bend, but they're looking. They're looking solid. And if I, if I hit myself in the hand with one of these spikes... Ow. Ow, yeah. There's some weight behind that. It's not the... It's not trivial. What we need now is the cool hook shape that comes all the way off here. So because I need the, the camera to be able to get the whole room in because this saw is so, so massive, I'm going to have to tilt it back up again, but then I'm going to cut the hook shape out. Again, just eyeballing all of the measurements. I'll have a look what the picture looks like. I'll have the superimposition up on the screen as well, and we'll just get on that hook. Right, let's go. Right, so I've eyeballed the hook to be about that. I don't know if you can see the pen marks on the on the cardboard, but it's roughly about that. I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the last last thing, which is I'm gonna cut it out, then I'm gonna fold it over, trace it, cut that out as well, and then get two of those so I can sandwich them together again. Right, I've got the first one cut out. You don't realise this thing is brutal. Can you imagine that on a blade? That kind of metal hook, slightly further down to about there. That catching you. Oh, that'll do some real damage. This thing is huge, look at this. If you were in a real sword fight with this against this and that hook caught you, you'd know about it. Right, I need another one of these. And then just the same, we sandwich them together and duct tape them all around. Let's do it. Right, that's two of them. Let's get one of them taped onto the blade. The hooks have been secured onto the blade both sides, now I just need to duct tape around the edge of them to give them that th thick 3D effect. And this is the majority of the blade now done. We've got the hooks on the end as well. We've got the spiky bits in the middle, the, the kind of jagged hooks. We've got the arm grip and guard. This is effectively a full-size god sword. Oh my goodness, this is so heavy. I did not realize how heavy this would be to hold. The amount of, it's really hard to do any kind of stances in this thing because I mean, I know what I'm doing when it comes to sword fighting, but that is, there is so much weight behind this. It's ridiculous. What we still have to do is bind the handle, which I'm going to do next. Then we make the bandos sigil for the bottom. Then I've got to paint all of it. Now I wanted to hand paint it, 
but I couldn't find any hand paint that I wanted in the shop, so I've got silver spray paint instead. No idea how good it's going to look, but the great thing about paint is if you don't like it, just paint on top of it. Next thing to do is bind the handle. I'll be doing that next, and then we make the bandos sigil for the bottom. Originally, I was going to make a kind of complex swap in, swap out sigil thing where you can change it around, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that, unfortunately. I might just make a, a separate god sword, make four different god swords, one for each of the sigils, the bandos, armadial, Saradomian, and Zamorak. So I've got a bandos sigil going on, but for now, let's bind the handle. Do that next. For the handle, shoelaces. Now, if I was binding this properly, it was a proper weapon or a blade, I'd be using leather, leather thonging or really thick twine, tying it all properly. But as this is cosplay, and we're not going to be putting it through as rigorous testing as a real functional blade would be, we can afford to use slightly cheaper materials. Plus, I like to keep all the cosplay I do available and affordable to everyone. Now, we're not going to be able to take one shoelace around the handle multiple times because the plan is... If I just move these things out of the way, I'll be able to show you what we're doing with this. We take the shoelace and we wrap it repeatedly round the handle. So we take this and we simply wrap it around like that to provide a good grip. Now this part of the handle is still the two, the two inner core things that we were using earlier, the two gardening spikes. So here's the plan. I'm going to duct tape these two spikes together, just to make sure we have a nice smooth surface to work on. Then I'm going to wrap double-sided sticky tape all the way around the handle. Now, the double-sided sticky tape isn't actually that important. The binding on the handle will hold itself with the friction and I'll tie it and I'll put some glue onto it maybe. But the double-sided sticky tape is there just to give me peace of mind that everything is going to stay. So let's cover this in duct tape and then cover it in double-sided sticky tape. So the handle is now covered in duct tape, now to cover this in double-sided sticky tape. Right, the whole handle is covered in double-sided sticky tape now. There is no way that a single shoelace is going to bind the entire handle, so I'm going to tie two of the shoelaces together. This will, of course, leave a knot, but I don't think the knot will be substantial enough for us to really worry about. And if it is substantial enough, I'll just find a way of binding over it or gluing it down or just chopping it somewhere. It's not going to be a major problem. So let's tie these two shoelaces together. If I could remember my time in the Scouts, I'm sure I'd remember a better knot than this, but we are going with the old granny knot. One over, one under, pulled together and sorted. Okay, this is now a roughly three meter length of shoelace. Let's start binding a handle. When you do this, you want to tie it at the top and then wrap it down toward the bottom. When I was in the shop buying these shoelaces, I thought, maybe one won't be enough. And it's a good thing I thought that, because one only gets me about that far down, about a third of the way down. Which is lucky, because I bought three. So I've got loads of spare shoelaces. I'm going to continue kind of daisy-chaining the shoelaces together by tying one to the other until I have one real long piece, and then I'll carry on wrapping it around and continue binding the handle. So let me get out these six other shoelaces I was lucky enough to buy.
Once you've got the handle bound fully, you will see a couple of problems with it. You will see a couple of issues where maybe the knots stick out slightly too much. But in general, I'm pretty happy with that. We can get rid of the, the little plastic bits on the end of the shoelaces. They're called aglets. Don't ask me why I know that word. But we can get rid of those later. We can always cut them off or we can glue them down. Not an issue right now. The very end of it, I'm going to wrap in, obviously, a few layers of duct tape just to keep it there. This is not the way that you would professionally bind a handle. But as we're only... As we're cosplaying with cardboard and duct tape and shoelaces, it does us absolutely fine. It suits us to the ground. This is what we need. And this will keep us... Uh, this will keep our cosplay and our sword safe for the time being. Perfect. We now have a god sword with a functioning grip handle on it as well. And I'll tell you what, it's a good thing that this grip is there because this thing is, is heavy to hold from here now. Uh, we've still got the bandos sigil to do and then spray painting it all silver and then we can display it somewhere. Now whenever you paint onto duct tape, it has a tendency to flake off, so we can't smack it around, but the great thing is it's cheap to repaint. Let's do the Bandos Sigil next. Now I'll put a picture of the Bandos Sigil on the actual screen, but if you have a look at it now, and I'll look at it on my phone, you'll notice the Bandos Sigil is a somewhat complicated design. It's probably the most complicated of all the designs that I could, could think to do. All the other sigils are pretty simple compared to that one. So I'm going to need to draw that design out onto two pieces of cardboard and then do the same technique we've done with everything else, sandwiching them together, wrapping duct tape around the top and then painting the sigil on the bottom. So let's, first of all, let's draw the sigil on one piece of cardboard. And I'm going to look at the image and I'm going to kind of freehand the sigil. So let's see, let's see if we can do this. Right, I've eyeballed the design, and that's about what I've ended up with. It's not perfect, but when it's painted, and when it's clamped together in 3D, and when there's, there's multiple of them, I think that'll be fine. So I'm going to cut out two of these designs and connect them to the bottom. You'll notice that on the design, I've left this inch or so at the top just here. That is the bit that's going to connect the actual handle. I'm just going to, again, wrap loads of duct tape around that so it stays solid and stays there. So let's cut out two of these. That is the sigil I've ended up with. I think that looks pretty similar to the Bandos sigil. You know, I've played this game for 15 years and I still don't even know what the Bandos sigil is. Is it just a, a collection of lines and shapes put together or is there some actual meaning to the madness, is there a thing behind the shape, whichever J-Mod designed the Bandos sigil, what does it mean? And now let's get a second one. I now have two identical Bandos sigils. What I can do is attach one of them to the handle on one side of the blade, one of the handle on the other, push the edges together, and then duct tape them all up. And then, then all we have to do is paint it. This has only taken about three or four hours. Brilliant, let's get these connected.
Duct taping this sigil is probably more fiddly than duct taping these spikes here, because at least the spikes were all one uniform shape. We're getting there. I don't know if you can see that, but we are definitely getting there. So when we hold the gold sword, we should be able to now see the sigil at the bottom of it, the sigil of Bandos. Now, I wouldn't even fight with this. I am a pure Ceradomist through and through, but you can definitely tell that this is, this is a Bandosian god sword. Right, nearly finished. This is a Bandos gold sword. I'm going to be honest, I didn't expect to get it built in a day. So we can head outside and spray paint it now. Now it's night time where I am, so I'm not sure how easy it will be to spray paint. It's very cold. Spray paint definitely doesn't like the damp. And spray paint really doesn't like being painted onto duct tape. Because duct tape is so shiny and so sheen, the paint has a tendency to flake off. There's nothing for it to adhere to, nothing for it to stick to. If I had a can of primer, I'd spray primer all over it first. But I've only got the spray paint, so let's give it a go. Let's head outside and spray paint this, and then see if we can play. I can't even stand straight up in my room, seriously. It's hitting the ceiling. That's how tall this thing is. It's awesome. We've got the blade, and we've got the bandos for holding it against my white shirt. You can see the bandos sigil on the bottom. Now I've taken some artistic liberties with the handle. The handle's meant to be a lot thicker, really bulbous, but no one's hands will be able to grip that ever. So I've got to hold it like this. Oh wow! Whew, knocking things over behind me, it's that big. Okay, let's go outside and spray paint this. Okay, I'm downstairs in my house. It's low light, so I can't take the camera outside. I'm spray painting, which is why I've got, you know, rubbish, terrible clothes on to get paint all over. I'm gonna wrap masking tape around the handle, you know, the bit that we've bound with the shoelace, because I don't want to get any spray paint on that. It's really hard to get spray paint off of material. Now, the reason I'm not taking the camera outside, because, oh, it's arctic out here. You can't see a thing. It is just, the lighting in my room is great, the lighting outside is terrible. So I'm gonna give it a go, spray painting, and you'll see what it looks like. You'll see what it looks like through the magic of editing right now. This has turned out way better than I expected it to. I didn't have very high hopes for the spray paint, but it's really, it looks and feels awesome. Now I've still got the, the masking tape bound around the handle. So using some scissors and some patience, I'm going to try and take that off now, and then we'll see what the whole thing looks like. And here we go. There's not too much to add or change or take away. The only small addition I've made is I have taken a permanent marker and drawn a very thin line just down there to give a very, very obvious distinction between the blade and the hilt. It's not too obvious unless you're looking for it, but it gives it this nice, nice divide between where the blade would be and where the hilt would be. I'm really happy with how the Bandos sigil looks. I'm trying to keep this all in the frame at the same time, but it's just so damn long as a weapon that it's hard to get me and the sigil and the blade all at the same time. I'm looking at the screen and trying to, trying to hold it. So this, this ladies and gentlemen, is a full size, a ridiculously long size. This has got to be at least three meters. Bandos Godsword. If I was to attempt to swing this in my room, I'd knock something over. So for a first build, not bad. If you've been building along at home, please show me how yours is going. Uh, imager links, Gaiazo links, contact me. 
Yeah, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Twitch and all that stuff. I want to see what you're building as well. I'm really excited when people get into cosplay. So to finish up, thank you very much for joining me for this awesome Bandos God Sword build. If you'd like to leave a like or a comment, I don't like saying this, but I work on YouTube and unfortunately we, we live or die by the likes and comments. If you have enjoyed the video, really appreciate it. That means the world to me if you would like. If you want to come and chat to me live, I'm normally streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Josh Strife Hayes five nights a week. Thank you very much for your time. If you would like to see anything specific built, please leave a comment down below. I'm thinking maybe a Helm of Neat Knot, or Helm of Nate Knot, however you pronounce that word, for the next video. But for now, thank you very much, take care, and good night.